Okay, everybody, this is Muir Dashcam. Tonight, we are in Howard Beach, Queens. We're going to be talking about the time John Gotti's grandson, Peter Gotti's son, was in the crew that set a car on fire for banana captain Vincent Asaro. And also, he was in a crew that went and robbed a bank in Maspeth, Queens. So let's flip us around and get into it. I figured we'd start this video off going by John Gotti Sr.'s house in Howard Beach. Now, when I refer to John Gotti in this video, I'm referring to John J. Gotti, who is John Gotti's grandson. But 85, that's it right there to the left. Oh, you can't really see it great. All right, I'll, I'll pop my phone out of the mouth for a second so I can show you it. That's it right there. The neighbors put up a new fence since last time I've been here. I know too much about this house, clearly. So that is John Gotti Sr.'s house, was his house. Now, John J. Gotti, the one who I'll be referring to for the rest of the video as John Gotti, also lived there. Peter Gotti's son. Um, he actually got that house raided after he had a um, an Oxycontin ring going on. $1.6 million Oxycontin ring going on. The police raided that home, which the police were never in that home for as long as John Gotti Sr. lived. And then his grandson goes and starts a drug ring and the police break in. I heard they had like uh, a good old time in there, like messing things up and going in everywhere just because, you know, they're in John Gotti's house, the house they were never able to be into. Okay, we're going over to Cross Bay Boulevard right now where the incident that sparked the arson of the car happened. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Mooney Dash Camp. I post in there pretty much every single day. Any photos that can't go on YouTube, like crime scene photos or anything graphic, goes on the Instagram, so be sure to check that out. Also, don't forget to leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. I very much appreciate that. And hit the notification bell so you guys can see exactly when I post a new video. Okay, so... The day is April 1st, 2012. Vincent Asaro is driving, I believe, on Cross Bay Boulevard. I believe on Cross Bay Boulevard. He's 77 years old at the time. This is Cross Bay Boulevard right here. A lot of famous restaurants on here. This is a very known boulevard in Queens. Really the only main road in Howard Beach that goes uh, all the way through it, all the way down. You take this all the way down, you end up in the Rockaways. And you end up in a uh, broad channel before the Rockaways. So, he's on this road, and he's pulling up to a light just like this. And it seems like it was not that crazy of a maneuver. Someone pulled up in front of him, kind of not really cutting him off, but getting in front of him at a light. He was known to have a very short temper, so he didn't like that at all. So, he ends up chasing the guy down. They get into a little bit of a high-speed chase. He ends up deciding to stop chasing him for whatever reason, but he gets the guy's plate number. And of course, he contacts somebody, a Gambino associate, who has access to the NYPD database, gets the guy's address. He ends up taking a young Bonanno associate. Now, in all the reports, it says that he's an associate, but at the time, at this incident, he's 17 years old. I just cannot imagine a 17-year-old being an associate for whatever reason. The guy's name is Michael Guidici. So Vincent takes Michael Guidici and goes to the address that the Gambino associate pulls up, the house of where this car is from. So this is the next day. They drive to Broad Channel, which we're going to now. So I will speed up this drive and we'll continue this in Broad Channel. So we are entering into Broad Channel now, which is a very small um, on-the-water community in Queens. Now, you'd think Vincent Asar at 77 years old would let go of some of his gangster ways, maybe soften up a little bit. This was not the case at all. He was out with a young guy making sure that the address that he got was the address of the car that he wanted burned. So he identifies the car and he tells the kid, Michael Guidici, that's with him, to go get a crew together and get this car burned. 
So the kid Michael calls on Matthew Fatman Rulin, 22 years old, and John J. Gotti, 18 years old at the time. John Gotti's grandson, as I mentioned before. And they get into John Gotti's Jaguar, April 4th, 2012, and they go to a gas station and fill up a gas container early in the morning. So they're getting this done very early in the morning. Now, it is not exact on where this happened, where the car was burned, but we'll shoot down one of these roads and I'll give you, I'll set up a scene for you guys. Now, all these roads are very narrow and they're all dead ends. Go down this one right here. So you can imagine early in the morning, they're in John Gotti's Jaguar, shooting down the road, and they see the car. So the kid, Matthew Fatman, gets out, douses the car in gasoline, lights the thing on fire, hops in the Jaguar to shoot away. As this is happening, an unmarked police car is right in the area and sees the whole entire thing go down. Now, I don't know if you can realize what we're on right now, but all these houses are pretty much on stilts. This is the water right in front of us. I'll give you like an aerial view of where we are. Um, I don't know how I'm really gonna turn around here, to be honest. I might, have, I might do a reverse on the whole block. Yeah, I don't feel like doing this turn. So, you guys are about to watch me reverse down that whole entire long block. If anyone ever questioned if I could drive or not, this should be an answer to you. How fast do you think we can go? We hit 15 miles an hour. to wait for the light to turn green to reverse back out into that main road to turn around. That was an experience. So, the undercover car watches them do all that, instantly starts a chase. John Gotti steps on it in the Jaguar and shoots through this neighborhood. Now, it said he shoots through the neighborhood so recklessly that the cop had to stop chasing him. But, there's not really a neighborhood to shoot through. So maybe he was just speeding down Cross Bay Boulevard at such a high rate of speed that the officer was not comfortable chasing him that fast, which is very understandable because as I mentioned, and as I showed you on the map, there's not, it's, this is all one way. This is all dead ends down to the water, so. farther forward because that is a toll right there into the Rockaways. And this is one of the only roads that is not a dead end. So I'll be able to turn around and go back up Cross Bay Boulevard to the other direction. This is a part of Queens that nobody comes through Kind of unless you live here or you just drive down on Cross Bay Boulevard. So you guys are seeing a little bit of a secret neighborhood. So the car they set on fire gets towed to a repair shop. Is this guy serious? I'll talk to this out. Don't worry. Don't worry. One of us will know how to drive. <clears throat> the car gets towed to a repair shop and Vincent Basaro finds out where the repair shop is and goes over there to check to confirm that his orders were carried out. I'll show you a picture of the car right now. So they get away with this. After the car chase, after everything, they get away with this crime for the time being. Now, this same crew two weeks later 
April 18th, 2012, are driving to Maspeth Federal Savings Bank to rob it. John Gotti's girlfriend is one of the tellers there, so that's like their inside person, and they're on the way there to stick the place up. I'll speed this up and I will see you guys over at the bank. We are down the block from this bank now. That's Rose's Pizza if you're ever in Massmouth. Go get pizza there on the right. Very good place. Okay, we're gonna have to do a nice, fun, illegal park here in front of this bank, which I'm sure won't make anybody suspicious at all. Busy, busy intersection. It's always fun to film a bank late at night because it makes everybody nervous. I don't know if you remember me getting stopped in one of my other videos filming a bank at night. So, this right here was the bank or still is the bank? I think it is the bank. Yep, Mass with Federal Savings, right up there. So, this bank is where at 5.45 p.m. Michael Gordici runs inside, hands a note to the teller, which I believe the teller he went up to was John Gotti's girlfriend. And the note said, I have a bomb. So she goes in the desk. I wish these trees were here so I get a nice wide shot. She goes in the desk and hands over $5,491, which honestly, for a bank job, yeah, it does not sound like that much. Like I said, the whole crew is together, so you have John Gotti waiting outside in the Jaguar, which who knows where he was waiting. He could have been over here. Could have been just parked. He could have been parked where I was. Say hi to the truck, by the way, over there in the distance. Blocking the crosswalk. So who knows exactly where they were at on this day. Look at that. So they run out, get into John Gotti's car and zoom away. They were not caught for either of these crimes for a long time. They ended up getting caught and sentenced December 2017. They did these crimes in 2012. So it was really a while before anything happened with them. Now, John Gotti, at the time that they were caught for this, was already in prison for his uh, drug ring he had going on. Back in the truck. Quick after check, nothing special. Nothing special today. Like I said, John Gotti was already in prison for his drug situation. Um, he only got 30 months tacked onto his sentence, which I thought was very minimal for setting a car on fire and being involved in robbing a bank. Granted, he was only the getaway driver in both, so I don't know how they didn't get more time. He didn't get more time. I didn't get any information on um, Matthew Fatman Rulin. I don't know why I couldn't get anything on him. And then December 2017, Vincent Asaro got eight years for these crimes. And he was, I think he was 82 years old when this happened. So it was pretty much a death sentence. But then he got compassionate release April of 2020, uh, a year after he had a stroke. And during COVID times and everything, they, they knew he would probably die there. So I think he is still alive, but yeah, not in person anymore. 
So that's pretty much everything I have to tell you about this crazy incident of an old banana captain calling on John Gotti's grandson to help him burn a car. And then that same crew that burns the car goes and robs a bank two weeks later. It's crazy. To not get caught for a very long time, too. Which is um, unusual in these situations. So, I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one.